Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast, episode number 209. I'm your host tonight, David Palermo. As always, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, YouTube, wherever you can think. Subscribe to the podcast, wherever you find your podcast. Please subscribe. It'll automatically update, let you know when we drop one. Try to drop a few a week to at least one a week to two a week, maybe three a week. This episode, we have Ryan Talbot, Bills, great writer. Love them from New York Upstate, Syracuse.com. Uh, tune in, as always, brought to you by Punch Drunk Sports. Here we go. All right, and on the line, we have Ryan Talbot from uh, New York Upstate and Bill's Updates on Twitter. What's up, Ryan? Hey, not too much. Thanks for having me on. Uh, where can we find you? I told you I would ask you that earlier, and I forgot, of course. So, <laughs> uh, You can find me at New York Upstate and Syracuse.com, but also on Twitter at Ryan Talbot Bills. Sweet. So now, Ryan, I admire because Ryan is a grinder. Um, I'm a grinder on a construction site, or I used to be, not so much, but like I, I know hard work, Ryan. Um, and today I, I went to upload my podcast, and I accidentally jammed the mute button, and I had a nice podcast with Mike Smith last night, just kind of free balling about Terrell Pryor and the quarterback thing, and it's not running out of things to talk about. It's just like I can't get that excited for the offense getting incrementally better to beat a MAC team, and it, it's like you know, you and I were talking earlier. And uh, I, I was sitting here jamming some, you know, cold cuts in my face. And I'm sitting here dusty. And I'm like, you know, let me see if Ryan wants a podcast. I got time to make a graphic. He's pretty logical. Um, you know, Monday was a rough game for my friends and I. You know, we, we got – it got heated in debate, you know. And, and, and I think um, there's different layers to this. And I'm not saying I know more than anybody. I don't. Um, I just go by logic. Um, I look at these players like if you're trading sports cards, you're not just trading like a couple cards you throw in your spokes for like the gold card. No idiot's doing that, you know. So um, it, it's it's been rough, Ryan. I know you and I both started uh, out of passion, right? How did you get started like with this? You know, it was pretty much through Twitter. I was uh, <laughs> on Twitter one day, and there was a website called. Um, Oh, gosh, no, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name of Mike Straw's website, Queen City Sports. There we go. Queen City Sports, and they had an opening for a Bills position, and they said, you know, submit submit a um, resume with a writing sample, something like that. And I really didn't have a resume, but uh, I said, you know, I followed the Bills my entire life. I'm from Western New York. This is something that I, I know what their needs are. I can definitely put together like a mock draft, something like that. And from there, you know, it kind of took off where they, they brought me on board. And uh, from there, you know, then, I, then I've then i been around a lot of different places. I was at Bleacher Report before they really went with um, a lot of, you know, big name people. So I was covering the bills there um, for, you know, and I can't cover every spot that I've been at, but BillsMafia.com for right, a while. I was right, the editor-in-chief right. there. I really, I really enjoyed that gig, you know. Uh, Del Reed is a great guy and, you know, contributing and writing for that site was a lot of fun. Uh, Scout.com brought me on board for a little while there before they uh, were sold to CBS Sports. And then from there, uh, I joined New York Upstate and Syracuse.com. So I got to work a a long time or, well, about a year with uh, Matthew Fairborn before he went and uh, joined the athletic, uh, well deserved, a great, great guy, a great, great writer. That's a and great. Now, that's a great program to be. That's like this. Like, if they ever, uh, you know, athletic. If anybody dumb enough listening, um, yeah, call me. Thanks. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I would do any dude. I don't even care. I'm just a producer behind the scenes making graphics. Like, seriously, that's <laughs> that dude. I, I love that they pulled it together. And like, nah, we don't need you terrestrial people. We're good. You know, we're going to do our own thing and monetize it ourselves. So that's how you got to do it, Ryan. So, and then I caught you off to tell us where you're at now. Oh, and, and now I'm working with Matt Perino, who uh, came from the UFC.com. Really talented guy, a uh, guy that I'm also really enjoying working with. So, you know, g- great site that we're at, NewYorkUpstate.com, also through Syracuse.com. I uh, can't say enough good things about the site and the people that I work with there. You say UFC as in like Ultimate Fighting Championship or like? Yep, yep. He came right from UFC.com. Really? Oh yeah. 
Wow, that's really that's pretty cool. That's pretty so, Ryan. The point is, you make moves, and um, so obviously you've been at this for a bit here. Um, our end, the way this got jamming was, uh, you know, I just want to add it up. I thought Shane Gailey was a good coach. That's my dude. I get ripped on from my, you know, from fellow peers in this. Oh, you just have a love fest of Chan Gailey and Buddy Nix. And, and my point has always been like, no, they started doing logical things. And you saw what a coach can do. His press conferences are actually very educational. Now, do coaches get stuck, of course? But, you know, we learned a lot. I learned a lot about football from that coaching staff and a lot about how the front office should work from Buddy Nix. He just didn't care. He was so old. He was just like, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Like, whatever. Like, we need to find a guy. We're going to take the best one we think in the draft, I guess. Yeah, you know, and, and it is what it is. They set up a scouting infrastructure. And so for me, before the podcast started, I, I like really did not like Doug Marone's attitude. So when it got Rex Ryan the podcast started, and I was all all happy go lucky because I love the whole bloodline thing of history of football, innovative, doesn't care what people think, he's gonna do his thing, and his teams have always stomped the crap out of the Bills, no matter what, with their attitude. And it's something I loved. And then you know, now you want to do the exact opposite in the Bills and get this other coach that brings his lunch pail to work every day and yada, 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 says all the right things, allegedly. But he doesn't, honestly, I'm seeing more pre-snap penalties than I could remember. Um, I'm not seeing a super organized football team. I am not seeing logical football moves. And a year and a half to get a defense together is not acceptable. I'm, I mean, or even a full year, honestly. That's that's the, the easiest one, I think between defense and offense fix. And as I always say, special teams, I don't want to think about you. In fact, I wish they would just sign like punt returners, the best punt returners the Bills ever had, McGee, McCalvin. Like, sign these idiots. Let's get them in here. Let's roll. Because they can't return kicks. They can't, like, it's just, it's just, the, the, I don't, I, I never thought I would be this hopeless. But Ryan, talk me off the ledge here. What, or, or not. Like, what, what, what's been your take with this regime? When I talked to you, Rex Ryan was in, we were in double-digit podcasts, scratchy podcasts, worst audio I ever had. Sorry, um, but it's taken three years in your back. So, <laughs> it, you, you know, every coaching staff um, they, they have things that fans will like from the outside. With, with Rex Ryan, it was definitely his brashness, and uh, he he gave the media a lot of sound bites just about any press, or he had some kind of quote that you could kind of. Uh, run with with an article so in terms of that you know a lot of fans like that about him but when it came to the x's and o's and when it came to that in-game management uh the bills did struggle under rex and you know he he did make some quality moves he he played a role in getting tyrod taylor to buffalo uh he had a role in in other things there as well but i I also understood why his tenure came to an end so quickly it it seemed like the, the defense which was supposed to be his his expertise took a big step back under him and that was definitely surprising i think on a lot of counts i think that the pagulas were probably very surprised at how poorly the defense was played but but you also mentioned that under sean mcdermott you're seeing a lot of these pre-snap penalties offense defense you name it uh i think it goes back further than just sean mcdermott than rex ryan it just seems like overall this team has kind of lacked that discipline in, in the uh last decade plus maybe it's just one of those things where i you don't know what it is why it is because there's been different coaching sets there's been different regimes there's obviously been different players over that span of time but for whatever reason they haven't had someone come right in that could that's cleaned that up it's, it's just been something where this team has shot themselves in the foot uh numerous times in terms of pre-snap penalties in terms of penalties that teams really shouldn't be be making uh, on a yeah. regular basis uh, but, but, you know, with, with this current regime, and I know that you, you kind of said, you know, they fix the defense and you think that's like the easiest of the three. Uh, I, I, I get that, but I have been very impressed with what they've done so far, considering uh, what Brandon Bean has been doing with the dead cap space in terms of getting that all off the books. So that way next year they're actually uh, healthy from a financial viewpoint. They're going to have something in the 80 millions, or at least from the projected totals, 80 some million dollars in cap space. And and I get that that right now that might not be encouraging to fans because they're watching them suffer through this two and six start. Um, They're seeing, you know, Nathan Peterman getting a third shot here at quarterback uh, this season alone. They're, They're seeing a lot of 
inept play on offense. But you have to think, and they say they have a vision, and I'm sure every regime says they have a vision. But I, I think you have to give them a little bit of time. They, they did come into a situation where there were a lot of bad contracts on the books from Doug Whaley, and a lot of them are coming off the books next year. Um, you were, you and I were talking before we came on about how you were saying, you know, they could have added some some offensive line help and, and things like that if they would have kept all their picks. Um, and I think what happened was, one, I think getting a quarterback was a top priority for them this year. Um, whether or not that, you know, Josh Allen, whether he felt where he fell on their list, one, two, three, whatever the case might be. I, I think they they grabbed the, their top guy at that point where they said, OK, these guys are off the board. We need to make sure we make our move for uh, who's left. So maybe Allen was number one on their list. Maybe he was two. Maybe he was three. Uh, who knows? Obviously, he, they had him ahead of Josh Rosen because they could have had their pick of those two. But I get that move. Um, and then what I think happened is they saw Tremaine Edmonds fall. And I'm guessing they had a very, very high draft grade on Edmonds. Uh, I'm guessing a top three, top five grade on him. And when he fell into the teens, I think that's when they said, you know, we, we can make a move right now and get this guy. And he can be our, uh, you know, Luke Keekley, which obviously is a guy that Sean McDermott uh, – had in Carolina and that thrived under him. And he, and he's drawn some comparisons to Brian Urlacher and, you know, that, that's high praise. And obviously he has to earn that, but you have seen those flashes when he's been on the field where he, he hasn't been perfect, but he's a 20 year old line, starting middle linebacker, mind you. So there's times where he bites on a run play where, you know, it's actually play action. He's out of position, but you also see where he can kind of run sideline to sideline and make these tackles. You're like, how did he get from one that spot to the next? So, uh, maybe their plan wasn't necessarily to, to make those two moves in the first round. Uh, and, and that did cost them the opportunity to add talent and depth at offensive line at wide receiver, wh- whatever the case may be. But I just think that those two guys, especially in the first round, they had such high grades on them that they couldn't pass up on, uh, especially again on Edmonds when he fell to number 16. So what do you think? Um, Cause I know we're, we're running low here on time. So real quick, what do you think about, um, about this though my whole deal has been i get all that and i and i and i understand but my thing is i i obviously was a big fan of whaley and the reason i was a fan of whaley is the dude could yeah he gave away two picks for Rockins. i understand it was screwed up but that year ronald darby second round pick was awesome and as a bills fan we have grown to love second and third round picks i love that part of the draft i love the meat because what people forget is, yeah, you might only have one pick on 32 rounds, but this sport has so many positions that there's going to be top five graded positions. Now, if you actually break it down and go, what well, fits my system, it gets even better. So what Doug Whaley was great at doing was marrying free agents off the street to instant production within the system. This staff just really has lacked that foresight that said the defense it's coming together, and, I, and I've been ripping a start of a two-way contract because I was a big Darius fan. You're getting two players for one. That said, Jordan Phillips, is to me, looks like a Darius clone. Absolute value monster. And start of two-way, I'm down with because Keekly, you know, was behind that dude, and he obviously kept him clean, and that's his job. That said, they paid a big buck for him. You add up the dead cap and the talent they could have had over culture, and I'll say I do value culture more than ever. Since we last talked, I picked up playing adult hockey, men's hockey, I should say. And, um, you know, the locker room is a deal. It's a real deal. You have a couple. We were developing a team, me and my friend Kyle from Sirens and Sailors, the band out here in Rochester. Great kid. He's a leader. And we were co-captains of pretty much his team now. And we had a few bad seeds that we had to kick off the team, Ryan, and it sucked. It's like, don't get me wrong, like, I'll talk some shit, but, like, I'm not looking to beat the fuck out of anybody. I got to go to work. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is stupid stuff. So we had to get these guys off the team and really work. And, 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 and when you have a couple people that don't believe, it does drag down a locker room. There's a funk about it. I've heard stories from barbers about guys being up so late on the bills and, like, you know what I mean? All sorts of stuff, dude. So it's like... I feel what you're saying, man. Like, McDermott has to make it right. But I think the one fatal mistake that they make in the PR department is you can't act like Bill Belichick. Now, Sean McDermott just had a great, and I'll shoot it back to you real quick. Sean McDermott had a great interview with Chopin Bulldog um, recently, and he actually, like, went into some X's and O's. 
And all we want is smart, educated fans in Buffalo, which most of us really are because we've seen this coaching carousel. We have foresight. All we want, Ryan, is some nuggets to, of hope. And if I had a, a team that really wasn't the seventh oldest in the league or something like that, like they're not a young team. And he keeps saying young team, okay? And it's like, dude, just give us the truth. Just give us the truth. There's a lot of truths you can tell us that really do not give any competitive advantage. If you have a process, just talk us through it. We just want to, I just want to Dungeons and Dragons this operation and get into it, you know, and he doesn't really give me that meat, but I love the leadership. I love his wrestling background. I grew up wrestling and sucking at it for four years in high school. So I understand what it's like to drop 10 pounds overnight when you're state champ who, oh, by the way, or he, he went to states. Our friend, John Paul Zanger, he just put out a book. Okay, that's the kid I was behind about how to systemize a gym. That's what I was behind in varsity wrestling. So, like, he's awesome, you know, and, and he has his own, I think, a chain of gyms or something now. So, I don't know. But you get my point, dude. Like, I respect the college, I respect the work ethic, but there comes a certain point where, Brandon, uh, there's got to be accountability. Juan Castillo's been here, the offensive line coach slash run game coordinator. Dude, the run game he inherited was perfect. And they could have solved their, their offensive line problems in the draft. Those guys were either retired, Eric Wood, and Incognito by then. So, Ryan, wrap me up here, dude. Well, you know, you, you bring up some good points, and I hear what you're saying about McDermott. I think it's somewhere in the middle because the Bills do have so many uh, older players that it kind of skews their numbers. But on Monday Night Football, they did say that 40% of Buffalo's current roster, like that 53-man roster, is either in like their first or second season is what the graphic said, which, uh, you know, that took me a little bit by surprise in terms of like such such a big number, right? So guys like Kyle Williams, guys like um, Lorenzo Alexander, Derek Anderson, guys, you know, Derek Anderson obviously wasn't a part of the equation before the start of the season, but that gets factored in now. So you get these guys that are in their mid-30s, uh, and, and that does skew the number a little bit. So you, you do look around and you say, okay, you, look at the last two draft classes. Because you were saying, you know, you love how um, Whaley could find hits on like day or round two, round three guys. Well, the, the to credit Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean, they, they found Matt Milano last year in the fifth round. Love and, that pick, by the way. And yeah, and he's run, you know, he runs around like a guy with his hair on. But fire. that's he's the running bit. But, but Ryan, not to cut you off, that that's the whole running back argument, man. We can find those. That's a whole, you know, I, I kind of expect that. I mean, we had Nigel Bradham here. We had Preston Brown in the third round. You know, Mark, he's good when people want to get rid of him. He's a third round receiver and, you know, gets paid. Robert, you know what I mean? Like, we got these gems that we underappreciate here. They go elsewhere and they're winning championships. Well, and the thing with Marquise Goodwin, though, is he did have issues staying healthy in Buffalo. Uh, maybe maybe going to a, a you know a warm city team like San Francisco helps him. I don't know. But he, he's definitely had better luck with health since he's been there, uh, where that wasn't necessarily the case in Buffalo. Obviously, he's had a little bit better uh, quarterback play when Garoppolo was playing out of his mind last year. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have that this year. And right now, I guess they're starting a guy named Nick Mullins tonight. Crazy so, you know... <laughs> So you're getting that quarterback uh, issues there again in San Francisco for for poor Marquise Goodwin. But, you know, going back to it, they they definitely have an expertise in defense. And, again, you see it with Taron Johnson in the fourth round this year, and he's played lights out from uh, the the nickel cornerback spot. And Harrison Phillips looks like he'll be able to fill in for Kyle Williams when Kyle Williams hangs it up. So now you just have to hope, can they also do that on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, can can they add that talent? Because maybe they haven't hit on a lot of guys off the street. Jordan Phillips, like you mentioned, does look like a hit. He looks like a guy that you'd want to uh, extend here in the off season, make sure that you can get him under contract and keep him around for a little bit. He's been a, a great fit from the start, but now you have to flip your attention to offense and at two and six, let's, you know, let's say the bills lose uh, on Sunday to the bears and they're two and seven. At what point do you say, okay, we need to start evaluating this offensive line talent because we drafted Wyatt Teller, uh, you know, a, and later in the draft this year, we have Ike Botker who uh, we, we signed as undrafted free agent, but if he had not torn, I, I believe he had torn his ACL in his senior year at Iowa. Uh, if he had not suffered that injury though, he would have been a, a, a guy that was drafted. So can we get them into the lineup? What? So what, maybe what they do is, 
they put Wyatt Teller at left guard. They flipped Vlad to cost back to right guard where he played last year. And they could even give Botker some snaps at center because he, he has some uh, experience there. So you get some guys out there and see if you can develop them in the second half of the year. Uh, and, and if even if you see flashes from one of them, one of those two spots, all of a sudden the offensive line isn't looking – as drastic of a need, I guess it would be the best way to say it because yeah, Deanne Dawkins did get beat once or twice last week, but he's also seemed to be a little bit hampered with an injury that he had suffered earlier in that game. Overall, he's been solid at left tackle. If you can hit on Wyatt Teller, yeah, you could play him at one of the two guard spots. Um, a lot of people like to beat on Vlad Dacos and I get it. because he's He has been, he's been, a, been solid this year. Actually. Yeah. He, he's, you know, he was a career journeyman before, when he signed with the bills, but he's been pretty solid in, in both his years here in Buffalo. Uh, Jordan Mills is another guy that it's easy to, he's kind of an easy target, but he's at least, I would say at least been average on this line. And he's in his, you know, mid, uh, I think he's 26 right now. I don't have that in front of me, but he, he's also not a guy that's uh, really old. He's a guy you can keep on. So you, you see these, you already see these mock drafts coming out and you see, okay, the, the Bills are looking at, you know, Greg Little and, and things like that. And these are very talented offensive tackles. But is that the route that you go if you end up with the top two, top three pick? Maybe if you think that's a, a franchise cornerstone guy that can protect Josh Allen. Uh, but this is also a draft where it's supposed to be really deep at wide receiver. So could, do you take a wide receiver in round one? Do you wait until round two? Maybe, maybe you get Johnson out of Buffalo in round two, if he falls there um, just because of the depth in this year's class. So the way that they've hit on the defensive players in, in McDermott's first two years, and I say only McDermott's name because Bean wasn't officially the GM in Correct. Uh, McDermott's first draft. So, in, you know, if they can hit on offensive talent, the way they have in defensive talent in the draft, I think you're looking at a team that one is going to have a lot of exciting young players here in 2019. And then you have that 80 some million dollars in cap space that you can address something else. Uh, A wide receiver, again, getting maybe a true number one or maybe prior does look great in these last eight games. So you resign him. Um, Tyrell Williams out of the uh, Los Angeles Chargers to hit the free agent market. Maybe you bring him in. So there's not going to be, a surefire superstar wide receiver that's going to hit the market this year in free agency. It's just not the way that it works, but they can, they can address that position. They can address the offensive line. with one of the guard spots if these younger players don't pan out or don't see the field. So they're, they can put themselves in a spot to be very competitive in 2019. And obviously though, that will all uh, revert around how Josh Allen performs in his second season. I think um, that's uh, pretty correct. You know, and that it's just, I want to ensure that the quarterback is in his, like what's happened with Josh Allen is the worst thing that could happen. And that's what we were worried about at draft time is, are these guys going to be smart enough to get a, a legit quarterback's coach, you know, and invest in the offensive line and invest in, in, in that. And, and there's, I guess a, um, a center out of Denver, he'll be a free agent. I guess he's 29. I forgot his name. He'll be a free agent after this year. And I honestly think even at 29, the Bills need to open up the pocketbook for the center. Because to be honest with you, Ryan, when you watch the Bills offense, the offensive line keeps getting better. The wide receivers are getting open. Zay Jones, I would love to have him, his mom, or dad, anybody on the podcast, frankly. Because I, I love that story. I think having a mental breakdown is really crazy, and it doesn't get enough empathy. And I think there's a lot of pressure in the league, especially coming from a family. I don't want to make assumptions, but a family that's in pro sports. You know, it's like you want to be the best, dude. And these people need to be supported as people too. And um, so to me, it's really important that these guys have the right uh, support. And I don't want to see a guy like Josh Allen yeah. literally get a concussion. Uh, hurt his elbow because he's getting crushed. And then I feel like the things that he corrected that were his college problems, which was couldn't hit the short throws, he showed it in the off season. And then we get to the game. Uh, I think the third game he played, he was rattled a lot, and he was missing even those throws. And he it, it was just it was just you know I think him getting hurt is a blessing in disguise. But explain it, it's just I don't know, Ryan. I you have actually made this make more sense to me i just want to make sure that they can marry to the right system on offense and really look at themselves in the mirror because the one glaring hole they have is if your receivers are getting better 
if you're you got to see the best of Calvin Benjamin with Derek Anderson. You put it to him how you need to. Anwin and Peterman might just have too much zip on it for a guy like that. You know, he needs to be able to see it and spot it, like throwing to a dude in the paint, you know. And um, t- to me, the quarterback position has been the, the biggest downfall, and it's all on coaching to me. Every co- every P- every person they've put out there has just bombed flat out, has bombed, Ryan. So it's – I don't want to see these guys get all their guys in and then get this new coach and have them get all their guys in. So it's like I really want something to latch myself onto, Ryan. So I appreciate you coming on. I don't know if you want to rebuttal that, if you had a minute or not, but you don't have to if you can't. But that's, I don't know, I really like having you help me sort this out. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you know, like you said, the the Bills probably shot themselves in the foot this year by not having a veteran like Derek Anderson on the roster in the offseason. Uh, he, he's a guy that you probably wanted to have or, or another guy like that, not necessarily competition for Josh Allen, but a veteran that he could learn from that they could go in and look at tape together and say, okay, here's the read that you made, uh, but you missed this guy. And here's what you should be looking for pre-snap. You know, you, you do want to have that. And you, you, why wouldn't you they, know. why didn't they do that? That's what I'm trying to say is like that done. People love being and love this. And that's like, no, like guys, we got to get somebody on the roster that actually has over a thousand yards passing in their life. This is ridiculous. And then the first thing Josh Allen says it's oh, it's been great having Derek Anderson. It's been like oh, oh wow. It's like yeah, oh wow. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know. And at the end of the day, though, we don't know. Maybe they did reach out to Derek Anderson, and Anderson wasn't sure if he wanted to play this year. Or Matt Moore, guys that had ties to Dable and, and to this sure. offense. For all we know, they maybe they did reach out to a few guys, or maybe they missed on a few guys that signed elsewhere because they saw better opportunities. Uh, or a chance to win or, you know, something, something along those lines, because we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. And we don't know uh, in terms of the, you know, this coaching staff, how they're, what they're doing for Josh behind the scenes, but th- there were some signs and some throws that you saw Josh Allen make when he was on the field where you're like, okay, that's like the best throw that I've seen him make. And, and then the next week he makes another one. You're like, that's even better than the previous uh, the game that he was injured, I, I think the throw that he made on the on the play that he got hit was one of his best throws. He was. he kind of, uh, I want to say he threw it over a linebacker, hit Kelvin Benjamin in stride with a defensive back right on him. And, and it, I, the way he lofted it up over the first guy and hit Allen, in, or no, I'm sorry, Allen Benjamin in stride uh, was, was really encouraging. And th- there's been some other throws too where, uh, shorter throws where um, he threw someone open or, or, you know, he didn't wait for the guy to get open. He threw it, and then the wide receiver turned around, and boom, there was the ball. So uh, there have been some encouraging plays there. But, you, you know, when his footwork's off or, or when he's rattled, yeah, you did see some ugly throws. Um, I, I'll still go back to that Green Bay interception he threw right before halftime is one of the ugliest interceptions I've seen. He just kind of threw it up into the end zone where when that, he let that's it go me, like That's that. me and Madden. Like, <laughs> it's, it's seriously like my signature play in Madden. I'm just like, God. Ah. And, and oh, Ryan, dude, I know I, 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 I you know, and, and these are the things I forgot to think about, which is like, well, I don't know. And and you you know what? They're right, because I forgot to do his name, John Blank. But the guy is with the Jets. They did want him. Um, yeah. And he would have been perfect. Times. It's just like I'm seeing a guy like Bridgewater out there. I'm seeing there's there's so many guys who have played football like Matt Moore could have even. You know, I know John yeah. Murphy's a big fan of Matt Moore. That's even a possible starter. You know, somebody to be behind for a little bit. I mean, it's just I, I just think they could have did a better job and there doesn't the offensive side foresight lacks, but the receivers are getting better. You know, Zay Jones, he's going to be a dependable receiver. He already is now. Yeah, he, he does look a lot better than last year. He's already almost um, eclipsed his his receptions from last year. And, and that, you know, probably will happen on Sunday. Well, it could happen on Sunday. I don't know. You, you never know how these quarterbacks are going to fare against the bears, but um, he, he looks a lot better from year one to year two. Uh, and Terrell Pryor, you know, he's flashed. What are your thoughts on him? Actually? I, I like the signing. I mean, in terms of guys that were available out on the market, he's probably the most talented uh, a guy like, you know, Des Bryant, people were clamoring for him at some, at one point, I haven't really seen that much since the, since he was uh, let go in Dallas, but you know, there are flaws in his game too. And he's not necessarily the type of wide receiver that the bills need where 
Pryor is a guy that he he's shown some explosiveness. He's shown some ability to, to create separation, to get open. And that's more of what they do need on this offense. So I, I think for the bills, it made plenty of sense to bring him in. The fact that they were able to sign him, it, you know, is, is an added bonus because you'd think that when that his uh, groin injury was completely healthy, he would have had other teams that were really interested in him. The jets obviously were considering re-signing him and I'm sure there would have been a few other teams too. So the, you know, the Bills seem to um, go after him at the right time. I think he's a guy that's going to see a lot of opportunities over the second half of the season. And, and his signing alone makes me hope that uh, Josh Allen's able to come back before the end of the year. So, one, Allen gets someone new to throw to, gets a new weapon out there, so he can kind of even try to build a rapport and maybe even convince uh, a guy like Pryor that, you know, you should come back here again next year. We, we do have some kind of chemistry here. You're looking for an opportunity to be a number one. Uh, and, and he could be their number one next year, just because even if they, they take a wide receiver high in the draft, first round, second round, you don't want to throw them in as your number one wide receiver as a rookie. They usually need a little bit of time to develop. Uh, they can still contribute as a number two, number three guy, but you don't want to put that pressure being a number one guy on a rookie. Because uh, if you've looked at the recent draft classes, a, a lot of these guys that they've taken in round one, that they're looking forward to get instant contributions from, it's not happening. Uh, last year's class, especially, you look at Mike Williams, he dealt with a back injury with the Chargers. He, he didn't contribute much. John Ross didn't do much with the Bengals last year. He really hasn't done much this year, though, either. Uh, and, and the same thing happened with Corey Davis. He had a very disappointing rookie season, but he's come on here in year two a little bit. So uh, having prior, if you can keep him in the fold for longer than 2018, if he plays well here over these last eight games, that could really help not only Josh Allen, but help the wide receiver room give that rookie a chance to work on his own game, work on the route running, work on the speed of the game. And then obviously you'd have Zay Jones still in the mix too, who we were just complimenting as well. And, and a one, two, three of Terrell Pryor, Zay Jones and a high draft pick really isn't that bad on paper. Uh, so all of a sudden you're starting to help Josh Allen there. Maybe you had a fourth in free agency or again, later on in the draft. So, you you want to kind of see them do what the Bears did this offseason with Mitchell Trubisky, where I watched Trubisky as a rookie, and I thought, man, this guy really does not have anyone to, to work with for the most part. And they go off in the offseason, they add Allen Robinson, uh, a guy that I really liked who obviously uh, suffered a torn ACL in his last year there in Jacksonville. And they get Trey Burton, the, you know, one of the Super Bowl heroes for the Eagles. They add Taylor Gabriel for speed. They already have a good one-two punch with – Jordan Howard and Tarek Cohen. Uh, so now all of a sudden he has a lot of weapons and has he been inconsistent? Absolutely. The last two games, he hasn't completed 60% of his passes. Um, but, but he's also had games where he's looked really sharp. Um, he, he didn't complete 60% of his passes against the Patriots, but he did make a lot of wild throws and he had that Hail Mary that was caught at the one that kind of took him over the 300 yards of the day, but he made some good throws in that game. So it's one of those things where, okay, Josh Allen, yeah, he, he does need some work. He needs to be polished, but you want to see him have weapons so he can really reach his highest ceiling possible. And I think Terrell Pryor is exactly what the Bills offense needs. They need that kick in the ass. They need that shot in the arm. They need that dude. His his thing with the media was great. You know you know how I am about it. Just say how it is. And uh, it's a great guy for even Josh Allen to learn from. He's played all the positions. He knows what he's doing. Um I, it's fantastic. He's giving me a reason to go to the games. I still have my season tickets, obviously. So, you know, I'm looking to go. Um, long story short, I'll wrap this up with you. But but for real, that's what I'm talking about, Ryan. My big ripe is you could have had a quarterback follow you in the draft, picked up a couple of linemen. If defense is your expertise, I'm sure you'll figure it out, Dermot. You know what I mean? And, and that was like my whole thing is I felt like that these problems could have been fixed. But, hey, we're here now. And I had to remember that. And, um... It's like, like you said, if they can get the guy, they really like him, and they don't think, because who knows, next year in the draft, I don't know, but next year in the draft could be like the EJ Manuel year of the drafts, you know? So it, if this is, you know, their thing, I, I'm rolling with it. I love the players they pick up. I'm here to support the players so as well. Um, and it's like, I really just want this coach to work. As much as it seems like I don't, I want these guys to work. I'm sick of the change, just... The Bills can save themselves in the draft that they get a high pick, Ryan, by not picking a running back and making me fold my arms, shake my head like, you know what, that was a smart move. By trading out, 
and getting a bunch more picks back and then maybe taking some depth picks. And then if you want to do your trade up thing, which I'm sure they'll do, boom, you know, add a couple free agent pieces before and you should be good. But Ryan, anything else you, you want to do? I know you got to go work in like literally five minutes, man. Well, you know, just like you said really quickly on the draft, if they can get that, uh, if that quarterback from Oregon declares, because there's been talk that he's not going to come out this year. Uh, if the Ohio state quarterback comes out this year, that could really benefit the bills, especially if they end up with the top two, top three pick, because there will be quarterback needy teams that want to move up for them. Uh, obviously the giants seem like they're going to be a team. that's going to be right there in the mix for the number one, number two pick with the bills here in all season, but they can come on just because they have Saquon Barkley. They have Odell Beckham jr. There, there could be some games that they pick up where they might fall to five, six, seven. And, and if the bills could find a trade partner with the giants, for example, not, not even move out of the top 10, pick up a bunch of extra picks. Like you said, well, yeah, then they're sitting pretty for 2019, 2020 in terms of draft picks and hopefully getting some guys that can pan out in that regard. So like you said, if they can trade down just slightly, that could really benefit them. Uh, Bean has shown the willingness to do both, move down, move up. So uh, getting extra picks would definitely be something that you would think he'd be interested in. And, and in this draft class, you know, there are some exciting players. There's there's Nick Bosa, there's Ed Oliver on defense. And the last thing you want to hear is the Bills going after defense. But if they move down to five, six, seven, and can add uh, you know, one of those guys, which I think Bosa and it will go a lot earlier than that. But it, even if they add a defensive guy with that first pick, well, they still will probably get another first round pick in 2020 right. or yeah. second round pick in 2019. And then they can address some of these other needs too early on with, with top, you know, uh, 40 top 45 guys. And that, that would be very exciting for the franchise uh, as they try to move this along and build a winner here during Josh Allen's rookie contract where when they have that window to really build a team up. Now, do you like a uh, random question? You've brought me up a topic. Defensive end, Shaq Lawson. I really like him. I think he's been improving um, in the rotation. You know, I think the, the, the Bills defensive line, nose tackle out or defensive tackle out, I should say. It, it, it's really been a nice rotation. Um I didn't really notice Trent Murphy's absence too much last week. Did you? Well, you know, Shaq Lawson's always been strong in run defense. Um, I, I don't want to say I have gripes about the guy, but I, you haven't seen the pass rush moves, though, that you were really hoping you would get. That's my one big knock on the guy. You know, Jerry Hughes can seem to get after the quarterback. He might not sack the guy, but he, he has enough moves to right. uh, get past his offense. But you he know, sucked his the first three line. years himself, though. Remember, he wasn't in, like, the right thing for himself. Right system and things right. like that in Indianapolis. Before he, you know, and, and maybe that's what it'll be. Maybe it'll be here in Buffalo. Maybe it'll be in another place where Shaq lost and the light will come on and he'll play really well. Um, but, but he's a guy that I'm kind of, you know, I don't think he's lived up to that first-round draft status, but that's not his fault where he's taken, obviously. Um, but, but, you know, he has grown as a player. Absolutely. Ryan, what do you got coming up? And then I'll just let you go because you really got to go. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be looking at um, things to watch in sun- Sunday's game, and I'll have that up on the site tomorrow. I, I can't believe I'm uttering these words, but I-, I think I may have a mock draft on the website this weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I-, I guess when you're two and six, that's what you do. So, Who you know, I say, baby. Yeah, so I, I won't do any of the I won't do any trades in this first mock draft yet because I'm not that insane. Uh, but I will look at where the Bills will probably be, you know, around in terms of where they'll be picking and uh, do my best to address the needs there and let Bills fans know who's out there, who could be targets, who could fit their system. Remember how I told you we did a draft show off air because I wanted to throw shit on the wall to see if it sticks. That's uh-huh. really pushing it, Ryan. <laughs> get your draft trades in there so you know you're serious so again where can we find you on twitter and where will your article drop uh, you'll find me on twitter at ryan talbot bills and you can find our, my article on newyorkupstate.com or nyf.com also on syracuse.com awesome that was ryan talbot bills i'm gonna let him go and then uh i'll be back with you folks thanks ryan hey anytime wow so that was ryan and uh, I guess I'll talk to myself here for a moment. Uh, so, I like talking to Ryan because he's a professional writer. He's got to know his stuff. And um, when things start going downhill, 
I might tend to ding towards the confirmation bias there, like it's time for change. So he kind of made me aware that, hey, they could have had some talks with some other quarterbacks in the offseason to come in. You don't know that. And he's right. Um, You know, thoughts like that. You know, his evaluation on Shaq Lawson. Am I just looking for a whole lot of Shaq Lawson? Or, you know, so um, I have noticed Shaq Lawson does stop the run well. But I'm not seeing him really on the sack list here. Then again, did the Bills had the foresight. That's why they brought in Trent Murphy. Is that the deal? So really great to talk with Ryan. Hope to keep in touch with him regularly. It'll be, like, really cool because, uh, you know, again, logical, simple. And I like that he articulates and evolves his point. He's somebody that um, I think I just need to set up and just let him roll with it because it's going to go deeper. And um, people have been listening for a long time. I appreciate you growing with me through the process of interviewing people. I tend to Italian it up a little bit and cut people off because I get so excited. Um, But I don't mean to. So it was nice to just... Ryan just got to have the floor for a bit. And he was only only had time for 15 minutes. He had to be on air somewhere at 6.30 and to do a show. And it was literally 6.30 when I let him go. So um, I really appreciate him hanging out. Um, so, again, go read his stuff. He's great. He's professional. He's fantastic. And if there's anything you need to know, he's got it. At least follow him on Twitter if you're down for that. Do that. That said, I'm your host, David Palermo. Uh, This is my podcast number 209. And, um, you know, I just want to talk ourselves off the ledge here. I know the tone of this podcast went a little negative. But this is the Logic Podcast here. This was your always faithful, always hopeful. Yeah, I I am. But I got to see some things to be faithful and hopeful on. Um, I'm not the son of God. (laughs) I'm just Dave. All right. So take care. Have a good night. And as always, subscribe on iTunes. Oh, on the real, get on the damn Instagram. If you're on Instagram and do not follow them, Bills fan, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life. The Instagram is amazing. I dropped the podcast to eight this morning, typed up the description, recorded late last night, got too tired. And I forgot the audio. So thank you to everybody messaging me. Thank you to everybody looking forward to this podcast. It seriously brightens my day. Um, I am a servant of drywall. I hate it. Or so I say, and I just keep grinding. But, um, you know, if it wasn't for drywall, I wouldn't be able to take in a lot of Bill's talk and give you my opinion. So here we are, able to fund a stupid-ass podcast. And unfortunately for you, you're still here. So as always, brought to you by Punch Drunk Sports. Get on it. Punch Drunk Sports Podcast on iTunes, wherever you catch your podcast. Three comedians, Art Shapiro, Jason Tebow, and Sam Tripoli, all great comedians. Also, if you're into, like, conspiracies or – I hate that word. But, you know, they're going to hate these next words. Tinfoil Hat Podcast, pretty cool podcast where they'll get some alternate theories on of anything in the universe. And – just crazy to hear things questioned out, and sometimes you could actually relate them to the real world, and it could be simple things like symbolism and pretty cool stuff. So if you like audio, you're a fan, obviously you're a podcast fan, um, I'll probably just start having other people who have podcasts who are Bills fans or something like that on as well because there's a lot of great podcasters out there. Um, you know, There's one Mentally Chill podcast uh, with this girl, Chris Carney, and she's... Adam Crow is like extra if they need somebody with them on their podcast. So she's a comedian, really good. She has another podcast about dating, forgot the name of it. But her podcast is cool. It's it, it's um about pretty much like depression. And if you're having a dark day, it's probably a good time to put it on. But it's called Mentally Chill. And that's on iTunes as well. And that's something I really enjoy. Also, if you like WGR and stuff, you like the regular traditional stuff. Um, search Bills and Football on your iTunes or your podcast apps, and you'll get a nice RSS feed for uh, real cool stuff. Like the interviews are right there from WGR; they're they're up there. Um, 
you also get you can get show for Bulldog show without commercials. You can get um Howard and Jeremy without commercials. You can get the one Buffalo show, whatever it is, with John Murphy and Tasker without commercials. I always wait if the show starts because they'll they'll post them by hour. I believe there's two different feeds for the one Buffalo show, but just RSS feed it up. I don't like commercials, but I like to have advertisers. Sure. But the way I'll format it is I'll tell you how long you got to stick to the podcast and just flip through. It'll probably be like three to five minutes, hopefully lining up some people to help out so we can make more content. So as always, thank you for tuning into the podcast. I'm your host, David Palermo, and this has been uh, Numb Bills Fan Podcast 209 with Ryan Talbot. Really glad he joined us. So as always, check him out. I'm your host, David Palermo. Said already 12 times. Numbillsfan.com for everyone wondering what's up. Take care.